For the first time in 15 years, Ontario is updating its science curriculum. Starting this September, students in grades 1 to 8 will learn more practical and modern applications of science and technology, including engineering design and coding. There will also be a greater focus on providing students with critical life and job skills that are required to, quote, pre prepare them for the jobs of tomorrow. For reaction to this, we welcome to CP24 tonight Jason Bradshaw, secondary school science teacher with the Peel District School Board, Vanessa Vicaria, founder of The Math Guru, and grade three student Ava Madison Dixon-Azimi. Thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, Jason, let's start with you. The current science curriculum, this was created before smartphones, uh, before self-driving cars, before AI existed 15 years ago. I mean, how badly did this curriculum need a refresh? Mm -hmm. Well, you raise a point, which is exactly that, what I wanted to mention as well. If you think about it, 15 years means before the original iPhone even came out. So imagine that we've been working um, from a science curriculum that has been around since before so many modern innovations. STEM has changed a lot in 15 years, so it's definitely overdue for an update. So there's a lot to look forward to from that aspect of it. So let's talk about some of the changes. Uh, Vanessa, your mantra is to teach kids how to learn to love math. Will this new modern curriculum achieve that? You know, I think making math more relevant to kids in their day-to-day -day life will definitely achieve some of that. I'm always cautious when a new curriculum is under, you know, it's, it's announced too fast without an implementation plan because part of learning to love math means learning to help kids feel less stressed around math, more organized, to feel more supported. So I just want to make sure in this new push for something brand new that we have all the resources we need to help kids feel those things as well. So Ava, you're in grade three. Thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, can you share some thoughts with us, some challenges maybe you've experienced learning math and science in school? Um, of course. Um, when I was young, I used to be not the greatest at math. I was. <laughs> Traveling, I didn't even know my times tables. But then I had a math tutor and she taught me how to make math more fun. And she taught me how to throw out games and apps. And she taught me to take step by step until going fast. I thought I had to memorize it all. So now I know it so good because I took time to take math. So Ava, when you hear about this new curriculum being hands-on, what does that mean to you? Is that gonna be helpful for you in the classroom? Um, oh yeah, like coding. It makes me appreciate the everything because it's being coded, like from, like in games, it, the animation is being coded. In in TV shows, there's animation, there's colors, the music, everything is being coded. I don't know a single thing that's not being coded. And you know, Ava brings up such a great point about visual learning. Uh, officials saying today, Jason, grade six students, they're gonna be able to design and test fly machines. Grade eight students are gonna be able to design a system that replicates a conveyor belt. Uh, Jason, are teachers like you ready to teach those skills? Well, I would say that teachers like myself have an, have an enormous skill set that we can fall back on. But when you introduce new curriculum, you also need to introduce new teacher resources. And we do need to be given the time for professional development. So I am a little bit concerned that most of my colleagues have only just heard about this happening today. In addition to the K to eight science curriculum being updated, we are working towards a de-streamed grade nine curriculum as well, which is also being implemented uh, this coming September. And that hasn't actually been put out to us yet. So we still don't actually know what to expect in the grade nine curriculum. I'm confident that we will be able to adapt. It's what we do as educators, but we definitely need the resources and the time to assimilate that information. And I'm hoping that unlike the grade nine math de-stream curriculum, which came out in June to be implemented this September, or last September, I should say, I am hoping that we will get a little bit more time and support to prepare for this rollout. Okay, a couple of things to unpack there. Let's start with uh, the training aspect. Uh, the government is saying today, Jason, uh, that the teachers will get one day to uh, figure out the curriculum before they have to teach it this September. Is that enough time for you? <laughs> 
one day to unpack a curriculum that has been years in the making is probably not enough time. Realistically, what's going to happen is that educators like myself are going to be putting in a lot of time over the summer, um, which of course is unpaid time for us, uh, mm -hmm. to make this um, work when September comes around. Okay, and then also, uh, Jason, you talked about de-streaming the grade 9 science curriculum. Uh, and so essentially that means all students beginning high school will take the same course. Uh, Vanessa, the idea here, obviously, to make it more equitable for students, is that what will happen? Honestly, I, I'm a fan of de-streaming. The idea behind it of making the classroom and the STEM curriculum more equitable is a yes for me. Mm -hmm. I know we have a lot of students who at one point had been told they had to go into the applied math when they wanted to enter a STEM field requiring the academic math. They were capable, they just needed support. So I'm a fan of it. However, I can tell you firsthand, we tutor a lot of students in the de-streamed math. And as Jason said, it was an unfair rollout. You know, teachers weren't given the preparation time to learn what the new math curriculum could look like. And more importantly, we all know that part of being good and loving math and science and school in general means feeling organized and supported. That math course still has no textbook. Our students are working from crumpled up worksheets in their knapsack. So, yes great plan, but let's have a resource for them. Let's make sure students are supported. Let's make sure if a teacher has a classroom of 35 students, some of which are in grade nine, but working at a grade five science or math level, that there are supports in place to help those students. So are there not enough resources presented uh, as part of this new curriculum, Vanessa? So from what I can see, and let's, I would love to hear what Jason has to say, for the grade nine de-streamed math, which is happening right now in our schools across Ontario, there's no textbook. So assuming for grade nine science, there will be no new textbook as well. And you, you see t teachers are doing their best, but they're cobbling a course together from worksheets, from previous worksheets, from whatever they can find. And that leads to large inconsistencies across our province. But I, I am curious if Jason has heard anything different. I don't think so. So Jason, does this sound like a rosy plan, but are you concerned about execution here? <laughs> Um, exactly as Vanessa was saying, um, I totally support de-streaming. I've been working with my colleagues, even without having received this de-stream science curriculum yet. We're already trying to plan for it and to prepare for it. Um, but I, I agree that we don't have a, a textbook. We, we don't know what the expectations of that curriculum are going to be. And we're getting closer and closer to the end of the school year. And as I say, most of the work is probably going to fall on us during the summer months to figure it out so that we can hit the ground running in September. Ava, I want to give you the last word here. Um, when you think about being able to, uh, you know, build test flying devices and, and like you mentioned, coding in the classroom, how much of a difference will this make to kids like you? a lot of a difference because it teaches you how to it, it, everything. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate all of you. Um, Ava, Vanessa, and Jason, thank you.